I look great. <laughs> okay, let's see if someone comes on. Let's see if people hop on. I didn't put up a thing or anything beforehand. I'll be honest, um, I don't know what I'm going to talk about today, and this, this, hey Brian, hi, oh we got three people. Yeah, I was just saying, I have a bruise on my fish. So, that's a thing. I mean, it's kind of interesting. Is that weird that I find it interesting? I'm like, oh, I have a bruise where, ideally, you don't have a bruise. And I got it. I got it because I was massaging my face. <laughs> so know that you can massage too hard okay be gentle Ugh. 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 anyway and it's gotten a lot better but uh it's like in the purple green phase now so actually it looked better when it was more red it just looked like my skin was irritated How's everyone doing? I have been doing pretty well. I've been feeling really good. Like so much so that it's kind of like, Whoa, lady, like, whoa, put the brakes on a bit. Like last night, honestly, I felt intoxicated and I've been feeling this a lot like this past month maybe, where it's like, I feel intoxicated without being intoxicated. Like I feel like I've been drinking, but I have not. And I was like, why does this feel like I've been drinking? And it's like, because I'm so, it's not like uninhibited, it's just, I'm feeling so good that I guess I only associate that kind of like that <laughs> freedom <laughs> with alcohol. Um, so that's just really interesting where it's like, oh, so you don't need alcohol to feel that way. And maybe actually that's the way you should be feeling all the time. You know what I mean? Like, what if our standards of how one should feel day to day are so low and pathetic and we just get used to that and we think, well, that's how you're supposed to feel. You're just supposed to kind of like, okay, like go through life like that. And actually, we're supposed to be like overflowing with appreciation and love every single moment of the day. I mean, that's possible. Do you want to be like that? I think people worry also that it's like obnoxious to other people to be that happy. Not touched alcohol in five years. Good for you. Good for you. It's interesting that we're like, I see that happening more and more people moving away from alcohol. Like whether they had a problem with it or not. Um, see the reason that I like mentioned it, I was, I was like, I don't want anyone to think that someone hit me or something. No one hit me but myself. And I didn't, I was, I was doing this, but I went too rough. 
15 years. Wow. Okay, so this is my thing about alcohol. It's like, how do I put this? Like the, <laughs> I, uh, like the, the streak concerns me. Maybe it becomes, maybe it's empowering. For me, I always think like, that's too big a streak. Like, um, not too big a streak, but I worry about like putting something in a like never category. Um, that's just me. Like I try to have moderation in almost everything I do. Hey, stressed. You've been super anxious lately and usually feel really relaxed here in this space, so thank you. Oh my goodness, then I went live just for you because I honestly didn't, almost didn't go live because I was like, I don't have anything to say. I, <laughs> I, was, I was out for coffee and, uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm kind of like sick of hearing myself talk. I don't know if I want to go live today, but I went live just for you. So I hope you feel, you know what, let's get relaxed in here. I hope we, we can ease any anxiety that you're going through. Hi, Hannes. I don't know why I always get excited when your name pops up. I just love your name, Hannes Olsen. I love all the, I love the sounds in your name, like Olsen. I love the two S's and the, I don't know, it's just a good name. Good name, your parents did well. You prefer just to stay away from the alcohol. I got it. I got it. I think that's like, I think that's, um, well, I don't know. I was trying to come up with a comparison. I don't know that I have a comparison in my life. Again, I try to be just like, that I can partake in anything, but I don't do it to excess. I'm really good at not doing anything to excess. Things feel like they're falling apart right now. But I have so much faith that things are going to work out. Ah, oh, I love that you have. Yes. I'm not going to pretend everything is perfect right now. But I know hard times a short phase. Yeah. Well, hey, you're good then. You're good. I mean, nothing's falling apart. Could be falling together, you know? Nothing's falling apart. Things break up, you know, break up so that they can be reassembled in different configurations. And whatever is going on right now doesn't have control over you doesn't have control over your feelings, doesn't have control over your mental space, doesn't have control over you. It's just, what's going on? What's going on? And you can still find, you can be like the still space in all of that. You can, you absolutely can. Hey Manuel. you just get more social with alcohol. I do too. And this is why lately I'm like, wait, did I have something to drink? <laughs> because normally like, that's what I mean about free. It's like, oh, I'm capable of being this free without it. Like, yeah. Meaning that, I don't know, like, why aren't you social? You know, like usually it's because like we're self-conscious and like a little bit worried. Like, this is kind of what I mean about, like, I actually think there's, like, some underlying worry day to day that most people carry around just always. And even their, like, best moments, they're still kind of a little bit unsure. And it's like, what if that wasn't there? What if that really wasn't there? I People don't let themselves go there, or at least I usually don't, because they think that, like, if they really just let themselves go there, they're gonna step on some toes. They're gonna do something wrong. They're gonna like blah, blah, blah. Um, and so like alcohol is kind of a gateway for that. And then they can go like, well, I was drunk. 
as opposed to I was just happy <laughs> um, or I was just being myself. Uh, I don't know. So even like right now talking to you, I'm like, right, I'm just drinking kombucha, but it's so weird. I just feel like I'm, I don't know. I feel good. I guess there's like a little bit of alcohol in kombucha. That's what it is. Oh, you like the jacket. Ooh. I am trying to picture what you mean by a military thermal jacket. I think I know what you mean. This is just free people though. Less shy with, the, it's not fake. It's not fake, it's just like, um, you know, you're just helped a little bit. I think sometimes actually like, alcohol and other substances like pot or something can be, can show you what's possible actually. Like, oh, I can be like this. And then like, can I do this without the thing? I think sometimes it, it can, it can help. Yeah. Like, I think with weed, and also actually, like, in social settings, you know, it's like, oh, I can be around people. Sure, maybe I was high that time or whatever, but that's, like, I was fine. I was safe. Like, no one did anything. No one called me out. No one was mean to me or whatever. I don't know, whatever you think it is. Oh, that was fine. I was there. And then as you get more comfortable with yourself, you don't need it anymore. And I can't like, not to mention like hallucinogenics and things like that. Is that what I mean? I'm thinking like mushrooms or things like that. <laughs> you were kidnapped by a bachelor at party. That's just fun. <laughs> you only drink when I'm sad, but I guess it's supposed to be for a fun thing. It's not supposed to be for anything. That's the other thing too. Like people have like, oh, alcohol is like supposed to be this thing. No. Oh, you never did any drugs, was too scared, only tried weed. I used to, so I don't like weed really, but I, I do like edibles, or at least I used to. And um, like I would just, I, I was kind of obsessed with the kind, not obsessed, but I was really into the kinds of thoughts I would have taking edibles. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I even have like notebooks full of like, <laughs> um, and maybe they're just stupid high thoughts, but I love the way it made me think. Honestly, I love the way it made me think. Um, and when I like referred back to them, I, like they were still coherent. You know what I mean? So, and I also know people that like microdose on LSD and things like that. So, <laughs> I think it depends on who you are. You have to know yourself. You have to know if like you can handle it and and whether it's it's a benefit to you or a, a detriment. Yeah. Uh, they are the best thoughts. And I know like people like people do tons of like creative things, you know, taking substances and things like that too. Um so I'm curious about that. Um, I don't know that I could like work on substances. I don't know. The other thing too that I found, am I allowed to sh So like I'm interested too in like Adderall. I don't even know exactly what Adderall does. 
but apparently everyone's on it, especially taking tests or like doing work or things like that. Cool, you're on a substance there. Um, everyone's also like on a substance doing coffee, by the way. Uh, or I guess you could say sugar. Sugar affects you, yeah. But like Adderall or taking anti-anxiety meds, uh, you know, and it's something that I never gave myself permission to do. Like I thought about that. I've thought about like, you know, taking a shot of whiskey before an audition. Cause I was like, maybe it would make me looser, like make me more confident or whatever like that. And I never gave myself permission. Cause I always thought like, no, there's something wrong that I might need that. I don't think I needed to be so strict on myself. Like it could have been terrible. It, it could have just been like a, an awful experience. Um, and totally backfired, but I could have experimented with it, you know, and tried it. I just never wanted to become dependent on anything. That's, that's really always been my thing. <laughs> hey, Matt. Only ever did mushrooms with the dragons coming out of the sky freak. You had, you had dragons coming out of the sky? I never had that. Mushrooms are amazing. I have a friend, okay, who full on like, it's not that she met her boyfriend on mushrooms, but this is kind of what I mean about like, like substances aren't necessarily bad, okay, at all. Meaning that like, you don't always like need to be in this like clear mind. I'm clear and I'm pure and I'm of clear mind. And like, this is how life works out when I'm of clear mind. Um, she was on mushrooms. I think she was doing a lot of mushrooms during this period of her time and just like enjoying herself. And then it was like while she was on mushrooms that this guy that she had kind of known, it just like clicked for her that she was like, he's a great guy. Like, and she knew he was into her and he's like, why don't I go out with him? Why don't I like him? And it's just like, she was like, yeah, I, I do like him. I'm gonna go out with him. And she started going out with him and then like, I think she messaged him like on mushrooms or something and they've been together like since the pandemic I think and uh it's like the happiest she's ever been best relationship I think she's ever been in so I'm not gonna say that's like because of the mushrooms but I think sometimes they help you out and they get you to places <laughs> drug users in Canada I think, I think drug users in America are pretty sweet and cuddly. Most of the ones I met. It's changed a lot. I think legalizing it in a lot of ways was a good move. Hi, Katie. You made it. Mushrooms are good on pizza. They're good on pizza. I've never had the kind you're talking about. They're dang- Oh, okay. Maybe we're like talking about different- I don't know if it's drug users. I don't know. Depends on what we're talking about. Sometimes there is like something I find- there's like the cool <laughs> pot smoker, you know what I mean? Where like they don't do it to excess, but they seem to genuinely enjoy themselves and they're just chill and like, I don't know. There's something like I'm just attracted to about that person. They just seem like they know how to relax and have a good time without it getting too much. It's night where you live. What time is it? Really? Crime has gone up 50%? Okay, I don't know. I guess what I mean by that is like changing the perception of drug users. I think there's a very different world of like drug users and drug sellers. Very different. Um, 
and drug selling, you don't have to be using it at all, actually. Hmm. Well, I've already been on here 20 minutes. No, that's not right. What? I think I jumped into like a, a time portal. I have not been on here 20 minutes. This is cool, I'm just chilling out with you guys. I'm actually gonna talk about anything today other than my very limited experiences with drugs. I'm, I don't know, what do you think about Oregon? Hey Carl. Hi, Putina. Hi, Stella. Okay. Yeah, it is a rainy day. What? I forget where you live, Matt. Very rainy, very cold. Hi, Eric. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Where are you located? Where's your location? Send me your, send me your details. Send me your coordinates. <laughs> you looked at the weather. Oh yeah, in North Carolina, okay. Philippines. Ooh, I would love to go to the Philippines. You're one of those people who wouldn't know where to get drugs even if I, <laughs> I am so that person too. <laughs> I'm like, what are the rules? What, what, what am I, how do I do this? What do I do? What do I do? Oh my goodness. I'm too nervous to do it. <laughs> like, I, I would break out into hives just trying to buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> like, uh, I want the camels. And the only reason I, I think the only cigarettes I've ever bought are Camels. And it's just because I know that brand. And I don't know why I know that brand. I will have Camels, please. <laughs> Sweden. Hmm. I've heard such beautiful things about Sweden. I was watching, uh, what's it called? It's like the show on Apple TV and it's called House or Home, I wanna say, and it's about dream homes. And the first episode is about this nature house in Sweden that this, this guy built for his family. Mm. And it's a house inside of a greenhouse. I want that. And especially in Sweden with like long winters Means, means double the season, harvest season. Oh dear, the kombucha is making me like. Ugh. Camels. What is that? What? Everyone here is taller than you. Sounds hot living in a greenhouse. No, but imagine, imagine if you just had a tree over your bed and you could just go up like, I don't know. Ugh, ugh, I just want that. You can just go and pick a, a lemon in your bedroom. I don't know why that's so appealing. Oh. And like, it would smell and it would sound so good. Mm. Hey, you are late. I don't accept your sorry. Justin. Um, <laughs> oh. Are people taller in Sweden? Interesting. Why would they be taller? Why would they be taller? 
Kannst du mir gerade? I should be taller than I am. Are you really four foot eleven? Four foot eleven. I always feel like eleven is like such a sad number in the height game. Like five foot eleven. Oh, come on, you were so close. You were so close. You, you couldn't. You couldn't. That one extra inch. You couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> I'm fun size. You're six foot three. My brother is six foot five. You guys know how tall I am? Can you guess? Sweet, are you tall? How much of the Swedish population has blue eyes? I'm curious about this. Apparently green is the rarest color for eyes, which I'm quite surprised by. I don't know, I guess I thought it would be blue. But no, it's green. So how much of the population has blue eyes? You think I am five foot four. Ooh, I like all these guesses. Wait, why do you guys all think I'm small? Huh? Have ever said that? I come across as a small person. Do you have blue eyes, Hannes? You're one meter 74. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's like, oh, when people, when people are like talking kilograms or st stone for weight, I'm like, I'm, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what that means. Thank you. Yes, I'm 5'11". Thanks. I could be tall. I could be a tall person. Do I have a tall person? Are there tall people personalities? Maybe. Maybe not. I think I assume most people are short. At least for women. I assume they're all my size. Oh, did I just give it away? Yeah. None of you guys guessed right, by the way. No one guessed right. So no one gets the prize. Like some of y'all were, were close, but no one, <laughs> you are not 5'11". <laughs> I wouldn't be, I would not do that. I would not be 5'11 because again, I take issue with 11 when we're talking about height. Pick one, like, don't settle for 11. Go all the way or don't go at all, okay? 5'11", <laughs> no, let's cross that barrier, all right? 5'10", yeah, be 5'10 or six feet. Don't, or, don't mess with this 11. My dad's 5'11". What are you doing? What are you doing? Wait, oh. Oh, that extra inch was too hard for you? Huh? Was it? Was it? Couldn't drink one more glass of milk? Huh? What was the prize? You'll never know. The prize was... That'd be fun if I just started, like, sending out prizes. And I would get to pick them. <laughs> They'd be, like, really useless things that I just found delightful. No, it's just, you guys can't get it. You've got a dinosaur friend too. What is the name of him? This dinosaur, he's a hit. You've been on here before, Patina. He has a name. And he's a lamp. You guys didn't know that. Really? 70 and, that's, see, but for me, when I see someone with blue eyes, I'm like, oh, <laughs> I really am. I'm like, oh, those blue eyes. I don't know. There's just something so like steely about them. 
Like, like if someone made strong eye contact with me with steely blue eyes. Um, but if everyone there has blue eyes, I guess you just get used to it. Every eye color is amazing, though. Like some warm browns. Mm-hmm. Are purple eyes a thing? If so, I kind of want them. Google wronged you? What? There's a lot of bad information about me. That's what you're talking about. <laughs> Five foot sixteen. Yes. I'm talking about the drunken DC adventures. I mean, you can if you want. His name is Dave. His name is not Dave. Unless you've named something else in my bedroom. Most people in your school have blue eyes and blonde hair. No one has blue eyes and blonde hair here. No one. Boy. I used to, I used to think I was going to end up with my, someone with like blonde. I was like, yeah, I'm going to end up with a blonde. You, I don't need any blondes. No one in Montreal has blonde hair. I mean, I'm sure some do, but it's not common, unfortunately. And you meet more women who are blondes because they're not really blonde. So I should move to Sweden. You have purple eyes, Manuel? Do you really? Do you really? Can you just say yes? I'm maroon. Maroon eyes. Ah, just vampire eyes. Mm hmm. Can we just like make every eye? What if everyone like just got to pick their eye color and they were like all colors of the rainbow? I would, I would personally love that. My toy from behind? What toy? You have blue eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that's all. I it was just like, if you have blue eyes. Yeah. <laughs> blue eyes, I don't care. Come find me. Five foot four and hundred and ten pounds. Wait, like for me? Stressed? That's that's really weird because I don't know where they're getting them. That's not it's so true. His name is Brian, but it's Brian with a Y. Okay, Hannes. Oh yeah, you corrected yourself. Google lies. I mean, unless Google is right and I am wrong. Maybe Google is right and I am wrong this whole time. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. The gray makes the, the blue stand out more. Dinosaur thing, yes. His name's Brian. In Germany, I had a female soldier with Dilated blue eyes stare me down. The light iris made the pupils stand out more. It freaked me out at first. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's the contrast between the um, pupils and the irises. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Five foot six, four foot ten. Nope. Hey, let's talk about the mess. Um, excuse me, the mess in my room. It is very. <laughs> it is. It is very tidy in here. Uh, I mean, it's normal. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of clothes. It's actually like, it's been much worse. There's just a lot of things on my dresser. And I need a new dresser. And I have all my like, <clears throat> skincare stuff. That's where that lives. And it needs to live there. 
and then I don't have enough hangers or room in my dresser because I need a new dresser. So clothes live on my mirror. You know, where do you keep your clothes? Or on my bed? Or over a chair? Where do you keep your things? There's method to my madness. And then I have like, I have an alarming number of books on my bedside table. I have like, yeah, that's, that's ambitious of me. If I really think I'm going to read all those books before bed. Um, I have about like 15 books on my bedside. <laughs> Cause sometimes I don't know if I'm going to want to read, you know, am I going to want to read Outlander or am I going to want to read Joseph Murphy or am I going to want to read Yuval Noah? Yuval Noah Harari? Who am I going to want to read? Am I going to want to read some like Vivaldi sheet music? I don't know. I have to be prepared for all situations. Okay? It's not a mess. <laughs> You'll clean my room for me? It is cozy. Thank you. It's very cozy. What do you mean in the closet? What's wrong with the closet? Maybe she's high. I'm not high. Oh, Montana. Mm, I need drawers. My room actually isn't that small. I just have a lot of things in it. It's not that small. Um, you guys just can't see a lot of it. Like, like I have a desk. And then I have like a piano behind you. It doesn't get a lot of light though. That's the one thing. Wait, what? I don't know what you mean, Uchi. Trashy literature? No. Not trashy. Um, how is the romance book reading going? Well, at first, <laughs> it's it stopped for a while because I got intellectual. Um, and I thought, like, I'm doing a lot of things, guys. I, I got, I got feeling smart. And I'm reading, like, Tale of Genji, which is a difficult read, okay? But I think it's worthwhile. Um, and then I was like, let's keep going with this classic thing. And uh, I started reading James Joyce because I was like, you know, what's the fuss about? Let's read some James Joyce. And then I decided I didn't need to read James Joyce, that I don't need to know about what it's like to grow up in an Irish Catholic school system. Uh, so that stopped. And now I'm back to the romance novels. I'm back to Outlander, which, I mean, it's not, it's not trashy. I... I do love like the, I love like the trashiness of the cover. I took this from a church, but I'm, I'm like hesitant. This scares me. This guys, this scares me. This is like, you're not supposed to read these books. This is not a respectable book to read. It's in his kiss. <laughs> Should I just start reading to you guys? <laughs> what is this? Oh my goodness. I saw that on TikTok. There's like, there's someone I started following who just reads books. And I was like, wait, this is a thing? You can have a TikTok account just reading to people? I should do that. 
But then I was like, ah, but I would want to read like, you know, he was reading like Picture of Dorian Gray and I was like, ah, but I would want to read like, I don't know, my text messages. <laughs> but wait, our cast of characters. Hyacinth. Oh, that's right. That's why I picked this up because this is in the uh, Bridgerton series. Like, right. So if you guys are familiar with Bridgerton, Hyacinth is the youngest daughter. So Hyacinth Bridgerton, the youngest of the famed Bridgerton siblings, she's a little too smart, a little too outspoken, and certainly not your average romance heroine. Do you ever notice that like the average romance heroine is always those things? <laughs> like she's too much, she's too opinionated, she's too brazen, she's too strong. They're all that. She's also much to her dismay, falling in love with Gareth St. Clair. It's always a Gareth. Always. Who else are you going to fall in love with? You're going to fall in love with a Gareth. There are some men in London with wicked reputations. A rake, perchance. And there are others who are handsome as sin. But Gareth is the only one who manages to combine the two with such devilish success. He'd be a complete rogue if not for <laughs> Of course he is. That's always the thing. So you have like a woman who's like, oh, she's not your average woman. And then you have the man who was both wicked and wickedly handsome. Lady Danbury, grandmother to Gareth. I didn't know Lady Danbury had a grandson. Mentor to Hyacinth, she has an opinion on everything, especially love and marriage, and she and she'd like nothing better than to see Gareth and Hyacinth joined in holy matrimony. Luckily, she's to have help from. Who's she to have help from? One meddling mother, one overprotective brother, one very bad string quartet, one thankfully functional mad baron, and of course, let us not forget forget the shepherdess, the unicorn, and Henry the Eighth. What? <laughs> I love this book. Join them all in the most memorable love story of the year. It's In His Kiss by the incomparable Julia Quinn. Did she write that? Did she just like describe herself as incomparable? If so, good for you, Julia. So that's how it's going. There you go. I read page one. Join me next time for my reading of page two. Ooh. I bet I would enjoy this. I love when they do that, when they give you like a little family tree. Is there a map? I love a map in a book. There should always be a map. Even if it's like this. I want a map of London. I want a map. What pictures? Why don't we include pictures in books? Who decided, oh, pictures are for children? I want a picture. I want a little picture of a hyacinth. In two years? Yeah, every week I read you one page. That Gareth is a lucky guy. <laughs> okay. So it's decided. I'm just gonna read romance novels to you guys. I mean, am I allowed to do that? What do I do for the spicy bits? Do you think there are spicy bits? Like, what are we even talking about here? I don't know. I don't know what's in a romance novel. How spicy do we get? Look, there's a hyacinth throughout. I'm into this. Who drew the hyacinths? And do they get credit? Every chapter, hyacinth. It's in his kiss. What's in his kiss? Well, you're not supposed to kiss in this world. If you kiss someone, you have to marry them. You must. That is the rule. Coloring book. Coloring books are stupid. I don't like coloring books. I tried that. 
It's supposed to de-stress you. It doesn't de-stress me. I just wish it looked better than it did. Hey, Antony Stalin. You like the spicy bits? Oh, I like the spicy bits too. But how spicy are we talking? Like, are these hot chili peppers or are these just like a little bit of cracked black pepper? Like, what are we talking? I don't know. No. <laughs> I would actually read the heck out of this. Like, you guys don't want me to do this. Because I would be like, he clamped his hands on her shoulders and spun her around until she faced the, the door. I'm taking you home, he announced. She turned, trying to talk over her shoulder. No! <laughs> Hyacinth shuffled along, following him to push her toward the door. Like, this is rivet this is gripping stuff. Gripping! Let's talk about the cleanliness next week. Next week, you will find me in a blank room. Justin, just for that, I'm gonna get rid of all my stuff because I'm so deeply hurt and ashamed. I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw it all away. And then go, is it clean enough for you? No? Is it? Is it clean enough for you? Have I pleased you? Habanero devil peppers. Oh my goodness. Whew. Whew. I'm gonna. Well, we're gonna need more refreshments for that then. Mm. It's 2347. You're very European for saying that. Okay, you go to sleep, Hannes. Good night, good morning to everyone. You go to sleep. You rest your blue eyes, okay? You rest your tired blue eyes. All right? Okay. I'm a great reader. I need to stop laughing though, I think. This is like something that I've noticed about myself. I'll like laugh, hee <laughs> hee. I like make myself giggle and then I laugh. That's like something I'm working on. I need to, I need to work on my straight face. Serious. I'm not really gonna read this right now. I may read you some on the next stream. Okay. Is there an, we've talked about a lot. This has been a very productive chat. Can I think about changing the live time? To what? Yes, I can. It's summer. I'm more flexible. Um, at some point in time, I thought that this was a good time. I was like, oh, it works for me. I have my Saturday night open. Saturdays, people tend to like, I don't know, be around, not working, but yeah, I can change it. What would work for you? Get vote from us. Maybe I'll, well, like, do you want to do a vote right now or do you want me to put a vote on the community page? The thing is, everyone is like from all over the world. Um, I think I was trying to make it work for like Australia as well. Maybe I calculated this wrong, but I was trying to make it work for Australia as well. Why don't you do that concert? Because, because I'm scared. Because I get self-conscious. That's why, Justin. Am I gonna do, oh yeah, I wanted to say that like, I, I didn't forget. I was going to do a live stream on Thursday and then I lost power. So, I didn't, but uh, maybe. That's my answer for you. Why I sing very well? I mean, I wanna get over this, I really do. Cause I love singing and I wanna get over it and I, I like, I get nervous. Or that's been what's happening. So, I don't know. Can that not happen? I would love that not to happen. 
Also, I don't know how to not make it weird. Like, to me, it just feels weird. It feels weird. But, um, there's, like, this girl I like, again, on TikTok, and she does that, like, all the time. It's just kind of, like, this, like, karaoke concert almost. Or not karaoke, but she has back background music, obviously, playing. And then she's just, like, taking requests and doing it. And it's very normal. And if I could do it in that way where I'm, like, really in control of it, um meaning like in control of myself and just like I'm the one making it normal. Uh, yeah, I'd be down for it. I just like haven't transitioned into that yet. That There's like another version of myself that I need to step into to be that person as opposed to like being all weird and awkward about it. You know what I'm saying? That's sweet. See, like, that's a really good point where, like, I feel like to be singing in front of people, you're supposed to be, like, an expert. Like, let me show you how it's done. Um, and that, like, I'm not allowed to mess up. I'm I'm a I'm a work in progress, guys. Really. Really. It does like yeah. Singing especially, I think, is the most vulnerable thing you can do. It's just you and your voice. You got nothing to hide behind. Nothing. Um and I know it gets better the more you do it. Maybe. <laughs> um, I really admired buskers for that reason. Like, that is so brave, I think, to just be out there on the street singing. Because those people aren't there to support you. You know what I mean? Like, at least if you're, like, in a... In, um, I don't know if you have like an audience like they came to hear you sing they're there but like if you're a busker no they're like off doing their thing so you're kind of interrupting their day hopefully in a good way <clears throat> that is why you can practice in a karaoke bar I don't like karaoke bars like I like the private rooms I don't like karaoke bars because I hate karaoke um, I hate the regulars that you get at a karaoke bar. I don't like that culture. It's kind of gross to me. I'm like, if you want to be a singer, just be a singer. Stop. You know what I mean? Like, stop using the karaoke bar as your, like, thing. That's kind of annoying. Make a wish. Ooh, I missed it. Did I miss it? I think I did. My wish is that I could go back in time and not miss it. Oh, it's still 55. Oh, I got my wish. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, now my wish is... I need to figure out how, uh, like, if I just, like, play, um, you know, like, lyric videos, not lyric videos, but, like, basically karaoke tracks, does it, would it work on the live? Would it sound all right? Because that would help me, too. Like, I think singing a cappella is very, um, well, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be on it. Let's go and hosh lap. Oshalaga. What a great, isn't that such a Quebec name? Oshalaga. Uh, maybe next time. I should hear your rendition of you two's with or without you. I should. Mm. 
<laughs> Zero wishes. I know. But I mean, like one one of my wishes was for a wish, so kind of cancels it out. Like really, I only got one wish. I should have wished for that moment to replay forever. But then I would be trapped in that moment and no wish could ever come to fruition. Fruition. <laughs> what? I'm always going to think of that now. That's very funny to me. I was doing a dance. I just thought you guys would like this. And then I'm probably going to go because I've been on here an hour. Um, I was doing a dance workout this morning. Oh, I love me some dance workouts. I love it. And it looks like my mom's going to start doing them too, which makes me so happy because I it just makes me very, 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 very happy. But anyway, I was doing a dance workout this morning and Barbie girl came on. <laughs> and I thought of you guys. I thought of you. I forget the first person who suggested I sing that, but I thought of you. And I listened to the lyrics and I was like, this is an interesting song. Who wrote this? Like, meaning, what, what was the incentive? Like, it's kind of kind of deep you know <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world life in plastic it's fantastic like if you if you take out the weird voices this is this is a sad song this is like a tragic deep feeling full song like it kind of makes me want to do a cover that's like not the you know, like aqua voice, but like, it's serious. Cause it's serious guys, it's serious. You can touch my hair and dress me everywhere. Like, come on, life is your creation. Come on Barbie, let's go Barbie. And then you have this guy who's like, come on Barbie. <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. Come on, Barbie, let's go Barbie. Ooh, ooh. Come on, Barbie, let's go Barbie. I don't know the rest of the words. Um, I don't know, and then there's like the bridge part where she says, I love you, Ken, I love you too, Barbie, which is kind of sweet. But yeah, that's about as much as I, as I know. Let's go party. Yeah, let's go party to fill their empty plastic hearts. You know, it's so sad. Let's go party. See, I don't know the words. Does it celebrate, okay, but does it celebrate artificiality or is it a commentary on it? In which case, this song has been deeply overlooked. I'm not over analyzing anything, okay? I'm I'm analyzing it perfectly, the perfect amount that it deserves to be analyzed. Okay, this is a treasure. This song is a treasure. <laughs> we need it. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair and just yeah. Imagination. Life is your I don't know. I like this song. I like it more and more. And actually, I'm sure people have done like cool covers of it. It just needs a better bridge. That's my only disappointment. Like I'm all about the bridge. For me, for me, the bridge is the best part of any song. It's the best part because it's the total departure. It's like, oh yeah, I was gonna like kind of talk about music maybe, but 
I'm sure you guys know this. So like a song, you're like, you establish like where home base is. You're like, this is home, this is home. And now we're gonna kind of play with what home is. We're gonna give you what it is. A little bit different, a little bit different. But then the bridge is like, how different can we make this? And then somehow satisf in a satisfying way, bring you back home. So the bridge is like, and Barbie girl doesn't have that, unfortunately. Like, I think it's a kind of cop out if you just go into speaking during the bridge. It's like, oh, so you couldn't come up with something. You just decided to say nice things to one another, mumble something, disappointed. It's Friday. Let's talk about it's Friday, guys. Let's talk about the depth of it's Friday. Like, it's Friday. It's not. But it's Friday. I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Hey, Fatal. It's still a big hit, so guess yeah. Wait. Happy Gilmore? Happy Gilmore. Mm -hmm. Okay. You think it's a 90s tip off? I don't really know. Um, Madonna. Okay. I'm gonna go. What? The Hungarian dance on your violin? You play violin? That's kind of, yeah, I'm into that. I'm gonna go. For you, it's Saturday. Yeah, for me too. I know. Oh, everyone stay safe. I love how stay safe became a thing that we say to one another. It's very strange. It's like, stay safe. <laughs> okay, what's gonna happen? Next week is your birthday, is it really? Stressed, I hope, I hope uh, you had, I hope you're feeling better. Bye, bye Katie. Oh yeah, um, let me put, I'll put like something in the community tab for you guys, okay? Okay, 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 okay. All right, I love you so much so much and i hope you have a beautiful weekend and happy father's day and and all of the good things and you're all amazing and incredible and blah 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 and i hope you join me next week for my reading of it's in his kiss okay i love you goodbye